Welcome back to Fundamentals of Chest Radiography. Up to now, we have talked about a little bit about the psychology of diagnostic reading, about how the images are obtained, how we should approach the image and what technical factors to assess before we try to make to even make a diagnosis. And from here on, we are going to talk about abnormalities that might appear on the chest x-ray. We're going to start with some of the most common entities that regularly appear on the chest x-ray, and these are pulmonary nodules. Now, by definition, a pulmonary nodule is a discrete, well-marginated, rounded opacity that is less than or equal to 3 cm in diameter. If it's larger than 3 cm, we say that it, it is a mass. Now, a lot of these X-ray detected nodules are visible because they are calcified, and thus, they are likely to be benign. Nodules are quite common. At least 50% of smokers have one nodule, but in the majority of cases, they have much more than one nodules. And uh, even in smokers, less than 1% of nodules show any malignant tendencies. The question for us who are reading the chest x-ray is whether the lesion, whether the nodule is more likely to be malignant or not, and whether we should get a chest CT or if uh, a repeat chest x-ray in about three months or six months time is enough. So the role of x-ray is just to detect the lesion Try to, try to detect whether it is in the lung parenchyma or it's outside of it, and then to recommend further imaging. Further imaging usually means a chest CT. With chest CT, we can confirm whether the nodule was a true nodule, so a pulmonary nodule, or whether it was just a skin lesion or a rib lesion. We can um, further characterize the lesion because with CT we can measure the density within the nodule so we can um, diagnose fat or calcification within the nodule. If it's a malignant type of nodule then we might also detect ancillary findings of malignancy like uh, pleural effusion or lymphadenopathy and of course with CT we can guide biopsy. So with x-ray, we can uh, report on the borders of a nodule. Here you can see a nodule which is about 1.5 centimeters appearing in the lower third of the right lung. And you can see that it appears quite homogeneous and it appears to have uh, smooth borders. So based on this one image, I would say that this is a benign nodule and then next I would either look for priors or if I do not have any priors to compare it to then I would probably recommend a chest CT. What's also visible in this image is that the tracheal air column is now dislocated to the right. It's not compressed, only dislocated. This is the typical appearance of, uh, of an enlarged thyroid gland. And uh, if we recommend and if we get a CT, then we can also further characterize what's going on in this area as well. With uh, X-ray, we can also report on the size of the nodule. Just as a reminder, if it's smaller than three centimeters, then we call that a nodule. If it's larger, then we call that a mass. You can see that this smaller nodule has uh, smooth borders. So this is uh, also probably a benign nodule. And uh, this mass in the left lung is, uh, even though it's quite homogeneous and has uh, smooth borders, based on the size, I can, I, or I have to, I have to further characterize this lesion with a CT. So this patient cannot be sent home. He needs a, he or she needs a CT. And uh, this actually turned out not to be a malignant type of lesion. This turned out to be a bronchogenic cyst. The patient went on to have a surgery and uh, this area 
cleared up completely on the following chest x-ray. As I mentioned, most of the nodules that we see on the chest x-ray are calcified and uh, you can try and further characterize the calcification that you see in the nodule. Now the easiest is to characterize a diffuse calcification where the nodule is homogeneously white. A central calcification might not be that difficult to, to pick up or, or even a popcorn type of calcification, but we'll see examples of these on the later slides. A laminated type of calcification is uh, quite difficult to pick up, so this you would probably only see at CT. Malignant, malignant type of uh, calcifications are the stipled calcifications and the eccentric types of calcification. And here's another example for what we have um, mentioned uh, last week that we talked about rotation. You can imagine that if you have a nodule with a central calcification, but the patient is severely rotated to either his right or his left, then that central calcification will no longer appear central, it'll appear eccentric and vice versa. So that might be misleading. And again, just, just that's just a reminder that you do not want your patient to be rotated when the image is taken. So you need to assess for, for that as well amongst uh, four other um, technical factors. If you do not remember that, then you should go back to last week's presentation, which you can find under this video. So here are some examples. Here's a nodule overlapping the right hemidiaphragm. It's quite large, as I recall, this was almost three centimeters in its largest diameter. And uh, you can see that uh, there are some foci of uh, calcifications, but it's very difficult to characterize it. So we, we went on to obtain a CT for this patient and you can see this right lower lobe nodule uh, with uh, the typical popcorn types of uh, calcification. So this was a, a benign nodule and uh, this, this actually turned out to be just a benign hematoma. And here's another example in the upper third of the left lung. Again, quite a large nodule, but it's almost homogeneously uh, calcified. So this would be the diffuse types of uh, type of calcification. Uh, another, this is another type of uh, benign calcification. As I mentioned, every time I see a nodule, I try to look for priors to see whether the patient has had uh, any prior imaging, because that, that, can, that can help us quite a lot. So here's what, what I saw on, uh, uh, at the beginning of, the Mar of, of March of 2019. And so I opened up the PACS and I saw that this nodule a couple months ago was only about two centimeters in size. No CT was obtained in between but it's quite obvious that this uh, nodule grew rapidly and this is a sign of malignancy. So this I wrote down in my report and then the patient actually ended up getting a CT finally, but um, there should be uh, no wait in between or there should be no in between because this patient should have had a CT up at this point, but he didn't. So this is, this is what he ended up with. And just as a side note, let me uh, tell you that some cancers actually become smaller as they progress, but that's only typical of, of a tiny sub-centimeter uh, cancerous nodules. So these, these types might become smaller as they progress due to alveolar collapse, but that you will not see on the, on the x-ray that you can only appreciate on the CT. This I also only mentioned this uh, as, a, as, an interesting, uh, as an interesting thing for you to remember. 
Now, location is also very important because based on lung cancer screening trials, we know that the majority of primary lung cancers that appear in the, in the shape of nodules are located in the right upper lobe. So here you have this faint 2.5 or 3 centimeter large nodule in the upper third of the right lung and uh, this is very very likely to be an adenocarcinoma and on the right hand side image you can see this nodule which overlaps with the right hilum again it's quite large even though it has uh, smooth borders but this is very likely to be uh, squamous cell carcinoma so both of these patients went on to get a CT and they had their their um, disease confirmed with CT. Now on the chest x-ray you might also see ancillary findings that might point you to the right diagnosis so if you have a if you have a large nodule for example here in the left lung and uh, the hilum on the ipsilateral size side also appears bulky and opaque then that's probably a sign of lymphadenopathy so this is probably the primary cancer and this is the lymphadenopathy that comes with it and on the on the other image you can see this mass this is probably larger than three centimeters in the middle third of the of the right lung and you see this uh, added opacity this bulky opacity in the right hilum and even in the mediastinum in the right paratracheal region so again this would be your primary lung cancer and this would be the enlarged lymph nodes in the hilum and in the mediastinum as well so these might also be visible on the chest x-ray but of course these are quite advanced states of disease that we want to that we want to avoid and that and uh, we're going to talk about how imaging can uh, can catch lung cancer at its earliest possible form so this is the this is my short presentation about pulmonary nodules this was an introduction to diseases or or abnormalities that we might see on the chest x-ray and as I mentioned before, from now on, we're going to focus on lesions and abnormalities that might be visible on the chest x-ray. So stay tuned.